For problem of the day six, we were given a position function and we're asked to find the average velocity of that object. The first note here is that the average velocity of an object given its position function is the average rate of change of the position function. And maybe I can squeeze in a really quick mini lecture here. If we have some function, we'll call this function f of x, and we have an x value, we'll call it a down here, then the corresponding y value of this function we call f of a. That notation just means the y value corresponding to x equals a. If we have another x value, let's say b, then the y value on this function corresponding to x equals b is f of b. Now the average rate of change of this function between the x values a and b is given by the slope of the line that passes through those two points. And the slope of a line is often given by the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. We could also call that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, the difference between these two y values is f of b minus f of a. The difference between these two x values is b minus a. So this formula here gives us the average rate of change of a function on an interval a to b. Okay, so I think I can squeeze our first problem in up here. We're given an interval 1 to 6. That means a equals 1 in this formula and b equals 6. So our final answer, our average velocity or our average rate of change of this given function is going to be s of 6 minus minus s of 1 divided by 6 minus 1. And I hate making my page too messy here, but we can find s of 6 off to the side simply by replacing t with 6. Noting that this negative sign is not being squared, it needs to stay here, we get a value of 12 for s of 6. s of 1 we can also find just by replacing t with a 1, and we get s of 1 equals 7. Okay, now back to the main problem. We want s of 6 minus s of 1, that's 12 minus 7 in the numerator. We still have 6 minus 1 in the denominator. We can simplify this to 5 over 5, which gives us a final answer or average rate of change or an average velocity of the object given by this function of 1. Now that 1 could be in meters per second or miles per hour. It all depends on the units given for t and s in the problem. Okay, so that's our answer to the first part of this problem. I don't think I can squeeze part 2 in up here, so I'll move part 2 down here. And for part 2, we're given an interval from 1 to 1 plus h. That means that a equals 1 and b equals 1 plus h. Using our average rate of change formula that we came up with right here, our average velocity on this interval is going to be s of 1 plus h minus s of 1 divided by 1 plus h minus 1. Given our function s of t from above, we can find s of 1 plus h by replacing t with 1 plus h. Thinking of this 1 plus h quantity squared like this means that we need to foil the this thing out. And now we can distribute this negative through the parentheses and this 8 through these parentheses. And now we can finally combine like terms and reorder things a little bit to get this result right here as our s of 1 plus h. Now let's also find s of 1. I believe we found s of 1 in the previous problem, but we can do it again. We just get 7. Okay, now let's make all of our substitutions into our average velocity formula that we came up with here. Our numerator is going to be negative h squared plus 6h plus 7 minus what we found for s of 1, which was 7. Our denominator is just going to be 1 plus h minus 1. Now we can start to make some cancellations. The 7 minus 7 cancels in the numerator. The 1 minus 1 cancels in the denominator. We have this h that we want to cancel in our denominator. We have a couple ways of doing this, but potentially the cleanest way to make this happen is to factor an h out of our numerator. That would leave us with a negative h plus 6 in our numerator. And now that this h is a factor in our numerator, it can cancel with the factor of h in the denominator. And our final answer here is going to be negative h plus 6. This is the average velocity of the given function on the given interval. So, okay, let's zoom out on this thing so you can see everything that we did in this video. I hope that that helps you out a bit, and I'll see you in the next problem of the day.